Fusion 360 speeds up the process of adding constraints to sketches by adding them on the fly as you sketch. This enables you to draw the geometry with the design intent built in. And if needed, the constraints can always be deleted from the sketch. I'll create a new sketch profile to demonstrate how some of these constraints are added automatically. I'll start by activating the line command. I'll place the first point at the origin and move upward. Notice that as the line gets close to vertical, a light blue glyph appears. The light blue glyph indicates that a constraint will be added if the line were placed here. When I place the line, the vertical constraint is added and the glyph appears in white. Next, I'll sketch a line to the right. Notice that a perpendicular constraint appears below the line when it's close to horizontal. By default, Fusion 360 creates automatic constraints that relate to the sketch geometry instead of relating spatially to the sketch origin, which in this case creates a perpendicular constraint instead of making the line horizontal. The next line I'll add will go diagonally up to the right, which won't have any automatic constraints added yet. As I sketch the next line, however, I can decide if I want to constraint it to be perpendicular to the first vertical line or parallel to the other horizontal line. This is done by scrubbing over the other sketch entity, which means hovering the cursor above it and then moving back to create the sketch element. Scrubbing over this vertical line automatically adds a perpendicular constraint, and scrubbing over the horizontal line automatically adds a parallel constraint. I'll click to finish this line, and then click and hold to switch to a tangent arc. I'll sketch the arc to go below the horizontal axis, and then release the mouse button to place the endpoint of the arc. An automatic tangent constraint is added. To finish the outline, I'll sketch the same profile mirrored about the horizontal axis. However, I can't add symmetric or equal constraints automatically. I can line up points by using inference lines, which I'll pull down from the upper points. I'll hover over the point that I want to line up vertically. Then, as I move down, a dashed blue line appears that lines up vertically with the point. I don't have to worry about tracing it exactly. If the dashed line vanishes, it will reappear when the sketch line is close to lining up vertically again. An automatic parallel constraint is also added. I'll place the bottom line. I want to make the next angled line to line up and be perpendicular to the top one. I'll hover over the point to start the inference line, then move down until a perpendicular constraint appears, and place the line. I'll finish the outline by drawing a line to the origin. I'll sketch two more entities, a circle and a line, which will add two more automatic constraints. To draw the circle, I'll hover over the center point of the arc, and a blue glyph appears near the point, indicating that a concentric constraint will be added. I'll click to place the center point, then place the size of the circle, and a concentric constraint appears next to the center point. Finally, I'll switch back to the line command and start the line at the center of the circle. I want to make this line connect to the midpoint of the line on the left, so I'll hover over the line until a blue midpoint triangle appears, then add the line. Because of the sketch layout, a perpendicular constraint was also added. With the sketch completed, I'll move this point, and the general shape holds as defined by the constraints added. Since the inference lines didn't actually add any constraints at these points, they are free to move and could be manually constrained to keep them aligned. If any unwanted relation was added automatically, it can always be deleted from the sketch.